Oh, you got a little granola bar? Yep. And I realized I had my underwear on backwards all day yesterday. It was weird. <laughs> uh, what about you? You have your, your underwear on backwards? Now that it's on straight, I did rotate it to get a clean side. But... It was weird. I just realized that. It was kind of funky. This car right here, um, you went out in qualifying, and for a lot of the day, you were leading the qualifying for 4400. Uh, what what did you end up at in your uh, starting order tomorrow? Uh, ended up ninth. I'll be fifth off the line. Uh, I was leading the whole most of the day until power hour, but there was a lot of fast guys, which I'm super stoked on, and the car held up and uh, it performed amazing. Well, fifth off the line is uh, basically where you want to be anyway. You're up there in the front of the pack. You are going to have a bunch of dust there early. Um, but if you hold that position uh, through the whole desert race and can continue that into the rocks, if you drive like you did in qualifying, uh, and like we got some video of you uh, earlier in the week. <laughs> Uh, I'm feeling good about it. The car holds together. You keep your momentum. You're gonna you're gonna lay it down. Yeah, we're extremely excited. I'm gonna put the 40 inch tires on for the desert, and I think we're gonna come in and swap them out for the 42s. We talked about you maybe doing that, so I'm gonna be watching tomorrow to see if you switch to the 42s uh, on the rocks, because you know that saying, right? You can't lose with 42s. I like it. And uh, that's the same thing Yoder says, too. So look forward to seeing you out there on the track. And uh, thanks for talking Pleasure. to us here today. All right. Well, we are back in Nevada City, right? Yes, sir. Snowing. And we are with Brendan Thompson. And it's exactly two weeks, pretty much, after King of the Hammers. So we've all got back to, t back to town, unloaded the trailers. Um, the race cars are exactly where they were. Yeah, they are. This one's running. This one towed in the other one. The other <laughs> one broke a push rod before uh, race day, which so happens. So Austin's not here to tell his uh, side of the story, but the car was all ready to go for you and Austin to race in 4800. And like many people, you hustled, you got to the lake bed, then you just scrambled for three or four days trying to get it running on the lake bed. I, I watched you guys qualify. Well, no, the car was running great, it seemed like, and it started, we were noticing a, a miss. Austin went out and qualified. Uh, he did a good qualifying run, 32nd, I believe, which is good. Without you in the race Without car. me in the car, and he just did it, which is awesome. So, By himself. Very cool, yes. Yeah. And then... Um, I heard it coming down the hill at the end of the qualifier. It was like, like kind of popping and yeah, sputtering. and. Was. I thought it was maybe a fuel issue, but you got back to the trailer and it wasn't that. Yeah, we got back to the trailer and I decided before tech, I was going to run it down to um, Josh's place at Proper Tuning. Which is a couple hours it's away, right? It's about an hour and a half away. And you got you got Jake to step up, Jake um, loaded his, on the trailer, yeah. and did Colton go with him? Nope, it was just me and Jake. Yeah. And we ran down there and went, we made two trips back to Riverside getting parts. Oh, brutal. And this, all these racers on the lake bed are into Victorville, into Riverside, into LA for something. Everybody's always scrambling for parts the week of the race to get out there and race. Yeah, and I believe Josh's area is like uh, Victorville. He's yeah. There. So okay. we were there. Then we had to go to Riverside to get parts at CVM. And back and forth, we made two trips there. And come to find out at the very end, it was a broken push rod. And we did not have one to fix it. It was a custom push rod. You showed me the push rod. Snapped uh, in half. In contingency. Um, and then you made the smart decision not to slap something in there and just park the car, focus on the 4400, and poor Austin. Austin should be out there racing right now in his 4800. What's going on? Uh, we broke a push rod. <laughs> I mean, like you like you said, uh, he got the full KOH experience, right? Yeah, yeah, actually, because uh, we even... We even called Dave to see if he could, we could do a late tech. Yeah. And the deal was is he was going to ask my brother to go talk to Dave. But the deal is that he had to go with my brother 
and talk to Dave and ask Dave himself. So he got the full experience of hammers. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. right? Yeah. And Dave was super cool about it. Said, yeah, come in in the morning. We were good. And then... Um, but you couldn't get it to go. We couldn't get it to go. And then yeah. we had to break the news and he was bummed. And we watched the start of the race and I said, welcome to Hammers. Yeah, absolutely, you're, right? You're, you're there. <laughs> First so. year down here and you didn't get to race, so he's got a year to think about it. But we got NorCal coming up in uh, four weeks. Yes, NorCal, he's going to get the car back together. We got push rods. We're going to get it dialed in. He's going to have a full season or run who, in the car. Who put the push rods in the motor? I'm going to say it was me. <laughs> But it was the two of you guys yeah. together. Yeah, right? I don't think so. it was completely seated in and it popped out. It's just a, it was a, it was Austin and I that did it. So, so that's the story of the 4800. Yep. It was going to be the father-son race, you know, racing with your son, having a good time, getting ready for the big race. Yeah. There was going to be a really good story behind it, but the story's still good because you guys thrashed and thrashed and came together and just didn't and make the race. And that was like my whole goal of pre-running. Yeah. So... That one oh, that, yeah, because you were supposed to yeah. free run for the big race because yeah. you're riding with Austin, so you knew all the trails and everything. And that was going to be awesome. I thought and that went great. out the window. So you, instead 100%. of spending your time on the trail, you spent your time in the truck driving around the desert looking for parts and, yes. and you know didn't get to get out on the course. So fast forward, let's, uh, let's talk about qualifying 4400 because uh, I watched your qualifying run. <laughs> two weeks I've probably seen it reposted uh not the qualifying run but your practice run no, uh that oh that was that the was qualifying, qualifying run where you yeah, wheelied up that yeah. okay yeah um so yeah it went great because you were in first place in 4400 qualifying in your brother's UFO car for quite a while yeah for the majority until, until power hour hit until, until Brian Croft got there yeah Brian Croft is fast yeah he killed it so uh we did I had a plan I was up there at eight o'clock in the morning watching I was qualifying at nine so I was watching everyone go and then talk to a few guys up on the on the hill and stuff. And then had my plan set and then the guy right before me. I was like, ah, oh, I'm good. This guy's great in the rocks. He got there. Who was it? Andrew McLaughlin. Oh, and, you know, I've known Andrew McLaughlin for a and long a time and he is been in the rocks he's been in the desert he knows stuff right and he's like i was like man I'm did he perfect did he guy to follow so you guys were going left line and the left line on qualifying was controversial yeah. like most fast guys went left but if you screwed up it yeah. took you 30 40 50 a minute you know he got second. stuck and yeah. then he was all over the place and i was like oh, should i do that should i, I go like, that well, way i was like all right i just gotta try to pick my line again and then i waited there for a while i sat there you call that a line that you picked yeah <laughs> Yeah, it was hit the center rock, bounce to the other rock, and bounce off that rock, just and then you're going up the hill. Pinball up. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh -huh. great. So. Well, that was a great run in qualifying, and that put you off the line. Ninth. Ten, ninth, tenth. Yep. Okay. Lined uh, up with the can am. So, oh man, with the can, with with the, that's brutal. <laughs> and well, no. Five rows back. Yeah, and it was like I was talking to Maxis. I was like, I'm. Just, the strategy was like, I believe it was Hunter Miller. Mm-hmm. And. He kills it. Like they He's fast. And they fast, are fast. Yeah. And they were doing great. And I was yeah. like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to try to get them on the on the short course because I don't want to look bad getting yeah. beat by a K&M out there in a little no, go-kart. Nobody wants that. So, <laughs> no. So I didn't want to get beat by him at the go-kart. So I was like, I'm going to follow him in the desert because he knows his way. Yeah. And I was like, and then I, Chris at Maxis was like, that's a perfect plan. So, so did you sleep. follow him in the desert? He, he went past me and I was like, sweet, there it is. I'm going to follow him until I couldn't follow him. Then he was gone. He was and, I, <laughs> and then I was like the blind guy out there looking for, because my GPS was acting up right at that moment. It would be on and then it would shut off. And I'm trying to. And you're a one-man show. You got no spotter. So yeah. you, you basically are, I don't have you rely on your GPS or just watching the dust. So yeah, from then on, you just, you just followed the dust. Yeah, I just followed where, who I could and, and looked at the arrows that were backwards on course. So you were <laughs> backwards. No joke. Yeah. They were all facing the wrong direction. I'm like, what the you hell? Were, you were really fast on that first loop, I'd yeah. say. Um, and then uh, I watched your, I was actually in the Maxis pit when you came through on the first lap. Um, and what'd you guys do in that on that first pit? Yeah, I had their their new project hire out. 
Which was a 40 inch. Yeah, it was a 40 inch, and we decided to use that in the desert. And Do see some how testing, it yeah. see how it worked. And then the plan was we were going to come in, swap all the tires out for 42s. Because in qualifying, I ran 42 Trepidors. Yeah, which we got 42s on it right now. And yeah. they worked awesome. So we were like, okay, we'll swap that out because Maxis was like, oh, it'd be great to see how these tires hold up out there. So other people were just getting a splash of gas, whatever. Yeah. All of a sudden, you got four jacks and you're, you're switching four tires out. Yeah, the first it was stop. like a little NASCAR pit crew. They yep. were doing their changes. They even swapped the spare, didn't they? Yep, swapped yep. the spare, did everything like that. So then, I saw that. And then right when you were about to leave the pit, you mentioned something that maybe the engine was getting a little hot, right? Yeah, I had an air pocket in the radiator. So I saw them, you know, pop the cap, it blurped a little water out, a bunch of air bubbles came out, and they closed it back up. We thought you were good, you took off. Yeah. And then what happened when you left main pit on lap two? Right by my favorite spot to be at all the time is back door area. Yeah. And we were going <laughs> into the, just past the, entrance to back door went over the sand hill going around for just before bj baldwin's yeah. hill and yeah. the car shuts off and it shut off because it was overheating well no it shut off because low oil pressure oh yeah because yeah. it shot my alternator belt shredded and took out my dry sump belt oh. and the and this setup in here uh josh set it up to where if it's if you lose oil, oil pressure, pressure you shut the, the it okay. kills the motor and I know that's what Waze has on his MoTeC too. Yeah. Because you don't want to smoke a high dollar motor. No, so. So you got out of the car. You I, just, 30 seconds after you left the pits main camp where it would be a good place yes. to change the belts with all your crew, you're out by yourself in the dirt, changing a dry sump belt and alternator belt. Yep, and then I was like, And oh. it's rear engine, so it's tucked down in the back. So, There's covers. And then I'm watching everyone pass me. Watch <laughs> my brother pass me. I think he even honked. And I was like, Now is that where Robbie Gordon passed you? Yeah, they all did. He and got he got passed by Robbie Gordon. That's all right. I'm I'm good with it. He's Robbie. Yeah. They every one of them passed me, and then I was like, okay, I'll take my camel bag and I'll add some water, and add as much water as I could because it was pretty low. Yeah. And then was able to get it started. Went up over the hill, ran into another fellow racer, Eric. Eric uh, Miramon, yeah. which we've been tracking him too. And I too. saw him, and I was like, oh, so pulled over. I was like, you got any water? He's like, no, I. He, he doesn't run that stuff, so I was like, I took off. And was just, <laughs> he doesn't oh, run water in his engine. Yeah, he runs yeah. at Evans, yeah. so can't mix it. Yo, I got gotcha. you. So we took off, and um, I was just going, and then got to remote pit two, and my guys there put a gallon and a half of water in it, and then that thing was ice cold the whole entire so race. At that point, remote pit two, um, you're just starting the rock trails. Yep. Um, from then on, you never had any issues. Not one. Because you had lap two and then lap three. Except for GPS and not know where I'm going. And so you just started picking people back off because at that yeah. point you were pretty far behind. You'd been, what, it probably takes 20 minutes to change the belts in the desert, huh? Yeah, it was, it's a little. And getting tough. in and out of the car and strapping in and messing with GPS that doesn't work. So you basically started coming from the back of the pack, but I was watching the tracker. And as the day went on, you were just moving further and further ahead. Obviously you started up yeah. front, got passed by a bunch of people. And then you started picking them back off. Yeah, and it was, it was super cool. To, and we, I think we got to King's Veto was yeah. like my longest weighted rock trail. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and you hadn't pre-run it. No. Yeah. Didn't know where I was and this going. is the one everybody's talking and about. Brian it's Croft, loose, right? Yeah, Brian Croft was there, and then another guy in like a bomber chassis. Mm -hmm. And then, and we're looking at Cameron Steele broken. And then, how come Cameron Steele's always broken? Maybe it's just a weak link <laughs> in that car. But then Von Gittin was rolled over. Uh -huh. And so Brian's taking these crazy lines. He absolutely killed it. Did he? He, he did a great line, yeah. That's the time you wish that you had a video camera and in your like, eyes, like so I'll, you could go he, back and he see did it. it. He moved around and then I watched Jaron Guttner come up and then I watched uh, Marcos. Yeah. Marcos pulls up. Then Marco, like, he and Robbie was there. Yeah. So Robbie actually came up in on the top of the trail and went so Vaughn. this is, so i remember robbie was on the uh podium saying yeah. that he had to go back down and do king's veto which is kind of controversial you bypass around you winch somebody and then he you can in, still he, say that you ran the whole course because he went back down around right and yeah. then ran back up it he did he came yeah. in and, and he, he unplugged out. the trail right yeah in a sense yeah and then but i mean cameron was still there so Marcos was actually, Cameron was really the trail tampon. Right? Yes, and yeah. Marcos actually jumped in there and was like, "Oh, we're dragging." He started being a boss out there. He started telling people. We're <laughs> Marcos dragging. is Marcos is the boss. We, we started. We're dragging your car down, and I'm jumping in your car. And then 
Then Jaren. Wait, Marcos out. got in Cameron Seals' oh, car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like, and he's telling, "Wish me down the hill," and they're like, "No." He's like, "Pull me down the hill." Oh, that's awesome. It was pretty cool. And then yeah. we got around, and then my brother was there, and then my brother's co-driver was actually up there helping myself. Uh, How is it that he makes himself a car? He can have a co-driver, yeah. and then you have to be by yourself. Because he's the. He's like the he's mule. in charge. He's, he's the, the guy. Mule. Oh, he's the pe- yeah. He got all the spare parts. Yes, yeah, all of them. Yeah, uh-huh. and uh, he was able to help us get through spots, and then I got through that section, and then I was gone, and then it was just going. So down King's the trail. Vito was the the best the best story of the whole day because yeah. I mean that's all the big boys: Brian Cross, Marcos, Cameron yeah. Steele. You know, they're all there. Everybody's there, and, and everybody's out of their cars, winching, strapping, pulling. Except, except Brian Cross. Cross. He and just he picked ki- the spot. Dude, he went up the waterfall section and he killed it. He oh. killed it. I was like, that's badass. I was like, I'm going to go that way. I don't way. think I've seen that on video I yet. I was like, I'm going to go that way. And then... Then they cleared up. Yeah, they, they, they like, oh, they I'm going to go that way. Go the easy way yeah, once it's open. Yeah. Yeah. What about... Um, you had to do sledge, right? I was doing sledge. I come up to sledge and... Because uh, the line on sledge is to the right now. It's no longer around the plaque so to the left. I come in. Next thing I know, Darian jumps out of the bushes or rock area behind a rock. Oh, so out. this is a little controversial, too, because Darian broke down over there on Jack and hiked a ridge. He was, and, yeah, I, and, we, uh, we came to his car. I went around his car, got to sledge, and here comes Darian popping out of a rock. Yeah. And I was like, what? He's like, you want me to winch you? And I said, yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he winched me up and I got up. Which there. there's nothing against that. You no. can help other racers, right? No, so he came think, over. I didn't even think about it. So Darian winch sledge. So you did go that right line, yeah. right? You didn't go to the left. Nope, you went winched right up. right up the step yep. up and up to the right. And just moved Then on. motored right and out. Then, and that was and, the only spot I had to winch. Which he winched Raul, too. Yep. Um, I don't right think before he, I, he didn't winch Jason. I was going to say, I don't think he winched Jason, <laughs> I mean, did he? He's like, oh, yeah, I was. Oh, there. Jason, you ought to go that way. Maybe he was hiding behind the he, rock. I think he was. <laughs> he's he was like not. ducking down. Yeah, exactly. Probably it's a good strategy. I think that's a pretty good strategy. So, yeah, yeah. it was good. It was well, good. It, it, in their fairness, you know, I've helped winch Jason in races where he's won yeah. as a, as a uh, it makes you know, it competitor. Easier when your Everybody can do that. When your yeah. co driver doesn't have to jump out. Absolutely. So, you clean sledge then with the help yep. of Darian. Yep. And from there on out, it was just a, a sprint, smooth, right? Yeah, smooth sailing. Went through the lake bed and it's like, it just cruised. So I'm, you're the you're the only UFO car on 42s, right? Yes. Or no, no. Who uh, else had 42s? Uh, Wolf. Oh, Paul Wolf had 42s. He had, but he made lap one. He, yeah, so he didn't that do, doesn't help. Yeah, he didn't make it that far, so... Um, he did great in qualifying. But so, are you stoked on the 42s? I am. The 42s were pretty awesome. Obviously, I'm going to go back to 40s. Any for, other race? Any short Cal, coursing? Yeah, anything North else? 40s. The 40s? Yeah. But I noticed that they're all rounded off, and uh, they must so have been stickies. Now, yeah. yeah. They, and they worked great. Like this thing was awesome in the rocks. Yeah. And like some of that stuff, I was like, "Holy crap, that's far. <laughs> that's a so, long ways down." So at that point, you got out of the rocks, yeah. and then it was what's well, about 25, 30 miles to the finish. And uh, you had to go all the way down and um, down Turkey Claw. Yeah. So my last, I go across the lake bed. Was your GPS working at this point? Barely. Okay. And it, it kept going on and off, on and off. Yeah. And it was weird. Like I had to keep resetting it. And then I got stuck. And then I didn't know how to run the cursor thing. And I was like, Yeah, you, you I, got I course up, track- course yeah, down. Yeah, I was tracking got- myself. And then finally. I actually had to have my brother's co-driver. He's like, I can't stop tracking me. I ran into him. They were yeah. parked. And I was like, hey. And he reset the cursor and it started falling. Okay. But I was, so I was past Marcos at this time. So next thing I know. Yeah, going, you know, Marcos finished in front of you. Yes. And there's a story about that. <laughs> so I was going across the lake bed and I was doing about 80, 85. And yeah. the motor was like 5,000. I was just more stoked about. Cruising. Finishing. Yeah. I'm, like, uh-huh. I'm going to finish this thing. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was excited. Yeah. And we get across, we're on the dirt road now. Next thing I know, I'm just like, where are And then this. <laughs> Sometimes it sounds like a helicopter's coming from behind this you. This black car comes, is barreling by me sideways and shoots rocks at me. Yeah. Marcos is a nut. <laughs> that guy passed me doing like 90, it seemed like, through the whoops and no, in the sun. <clears throat> but it was pretty badass to watch him go by. And it was a brutal race. It was an awesome event, and uh, super stoked to be up here. Well, you know and he was dragging his tire rack at no, that time. No, no, he wasn't. Oh, was it dragging no. yet? Was the no. tire still on the back? Yes. Okay. And I was like, holy shit. This yeah. dude's like flying. So you, I've been passed by Marcos in the desert before. Yeah. 
and I thought we, I was with Yoder, I thought we were pushing. We were doing about 85 yeah. in a single track. There was no passing lanes, but bushes and trees and dirt That's hills, right? Like, yeah. And all of a sudden he came by at least 20 miles an hour faster than us, blowing bush balls up and then ducked right in and took off. And we're like, holy cow. And I'm like, that was Marcos. And it was in that first white IFS car, the, yeah. the original one. And then Yoder tells me, hey, in, in about a mile, we'll see him. <laughs> we came around a corner about a mile and literally the rear ends out of the car. I think I've told this story yeah. before. So he but like, this time that didn't happen. No, he barreled by me and I was like, holy crap. And then I get to the finish line and he's there. And I'm like, dude, and it's, the whole back of the car is like falling Missing. off. Missing. The yeah. tire's gone. The and rack's like, hanging down. The sway bar's on, broken. It was on there when he passed me. Okay. And I was like, dude. He's like, yeah, you were shooting rocks at me with these damn tires. Oh. He's like, I just had to go and give you a little taste of your own medicine. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> and he just blew past me. And I was like, I was like, that's all. Well, we, we all know that Marcos, he drives like a bat out of hell. Yeah, like Blind Fury, man. Yo, on, I on. love to watch Marcos. Drive. Yeah, he's yeah. awesome. Uh -huh, yeah. And it's like. I mean, there's been so he be, he passed you in the desert. Yep. Which, technically, you you shouldn't have got passed in the desert on that last section. I think section, he was one spot ahead of me. Yeah, he yeah. did. He he finished 14th. And I think you him and I 15th. were always going. It seems like last year at Utah, it was like we were racing, and it was like him and I back and forth passing each other. Yeah. It's like what the hell. I can, cool. I can guarantee you that he was not going to accept being behind you coming across the finish. So oh, it's good I'm that sure. you got it out of your way right yeah. there because if you got in Turkey Claw or in the, the, the closer stuff, you guys would have battled even worse. Yeah, but yeah, I, but I would have saw him coming. Then. Yeah, that's true. I, that would have been a little bit yeah. more. And I had short course gears in my car, so. So you came across the finish line, um, you know, nothing really seriously wrong with the car. So no. it's not going to cost you a bunch of money, no. right? Um, this car that you didn't race literally you found out it's a push rod so you're going to re-go through make yep. sure you got the right push rods the right lifter package that didn't cost you thousands of dollars nope. so you have your you went down on the hammers your fuel your food you know you, you you raced you had a good time came across 15th out of 150 i don't know what 110 started yeah. you know um you did get your ass handed to you by robbie gordon but that's okay and so, marcos gomez there was like a funny story too like ahead of time I was talking like the day because I've never been like so relaxed at Hamburg. You were, you were great. I was like, we were talking, I was excited, hanging out with you the whole week. Yeah, and yeah. it was like I wasn't stressed. I wasn't like being flat out just I don't know stressed out. I was like chill. All yeah, week. yeah. And so our mutual friend Zach, yeah, the machinist. Oh, I know Zach. He yeah. was he was at the camp with me and he was giving me a my pep talk. Yeah, <laughs> the day before the race, and he's like telling me I need to prep get my situation a little bit more pre-running more all this stuff and i need to be a little bit more on top of stuff he's like you did great in qualifying i was like yeah he's like but and then i had to tell him i was like dude you and my brother are like they the think too much well the best way they i can <laughs> explain them is they're they're like sharpshooters they want to take that one bullet and get that one kill shot and then there's me the guy with the six shooter just comes in banging <laughs> saying sweet i got one i sh i'm like i get it loose well, and I got I'm, one. I'm, I'm like that as well yeah I'm it's like, like you shoot you. off the hip and you're yeah. just like oh sweet i got i got it well Great. you you guys had a good week i came in your pit there was no stress a, a yeah. lot of a lot of other pits i went into during the week i mean they had giant whiteboards and lists and everybody had a job and there was no no joke around no having fun not i mean your guys in your camp it was awesome. We stopped by three or four times and uh, we, never we hung wheeled. out. We never yeah. went wheeling once at Hammers for all the time we've been going. And this time you did. This time, this oh, time yeah. you guys wheeled a ton. Austin had the Toyota down there. Yeah, we actually ran some of the trails. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they were driving so, the cars. It was awesome. Here we are. We're back in Grass Valley. Yep. Nothing's really wrecked. Um, we're back in your shop. You got the old oil burning uh, yeah. heater going because right it's snowing today. Yes. I mean, literally, it's snowing. In Nevada City, Grass Valley, yeah, which happens only a couple times a year. We just drove the, the old solid axle Duramax up here, you know, yeah. in the snow. Yeah, you gotta get that thing out That's in the snow. Be, it's yeah. enough. Um, and then, not only that, I walk over, your mill's warming up, because yep. guess what? You gotta make some, uh, some bike parts today, make some money to help pay for everything, yeah. right? So today's a work day, I'm interrupting your work day. Yeah, it's, I'm just trying to get back onto things, because uh, I gotta leave go to New York in a week and a half, two weeks, so I'm going to be gone another 10 days, and that's just a little well, bit of a time suck for me a little bit, but it's okay. As much as it might suck that the 4800 car didn't race, I would say that 
you know, you really couldn't have asked for much better of an outcome for your KOH. No. I mean, great stories on the on the race course, great qualifying, great video highlight. The car did great. I mean, your brother builds an awesome car. Yeah. It's awesome to see that the shafts, the diffs, and all that stuff can hold up with 42s. Yeah. Because everybody's going to be wanting to go to that. And, you know, are the RCVs going to hold up? Are the ring opinions going to hold up? You know, is Not it going to handle it? And it did. Um, and so I think it's pretty much a success. And 100%. You know, it was awesome to follow you from the beginning all the way to the end and see what happened and have a you know su successful outcome because not everybody had as much success as you. No, guys. and I mean I I'm excited even with a 15th place finish. It's awesome. I didn't know where I was going. I, my GPS kept flipping out. So. Oh, so well, did you, did you pre run right? You pre ran. Oh yeah, 100 percent off of Raul's notes. <laughs> At least you're pretty running off of the King's notes. I've never even finished hammers before, well, so. We didn't even bring that up. So in the in our prelim interview, the Brendan Thompson never finished hammers. Never driving. Not in a forty four hundred. Yeah, it, it was in a golf cart. Yes. Yeah. Golf cart. And so you got your finish at yeah. the hammers. And yeah. it got me excited about racing. And now you do it all over again. Yeah. So are you gonna take this to NorCal? Yeah. I'm gonna put forties on this thing and go Rub doors with the Gomez brothers. So what is that? That's like four weeks. I think it's in uh, in Prairie March. City. Yeah, Prairie March City. 24th, March 24th, 25th. Everybody needs to come out um, because NorCal's awesome. It's grassroots to high-end racers. You well, know? Yeah, we have a lot of guys out there that are a lot of heavy hitters out there. Absolutely. You got the Gomez's. You got you. You got Miramon. You got Cody. Miramon, all yep. those guys. Yoder. So that will be kind of the final finish up to this story is watching Austin race this in the pre-runner you know, class. It, <laughs> he's not going <laughs> to race against us in pre-runner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but we're going to watch him race this at NorCal. We'll get a little, we'll, we'll do a little follow-up video with him at NorCal to kind of uh, redeem himself Yeah, a that's going to give yeah. him, he's uh, got a little bit of base, he's got some baseball, so he's going to probably race the beginning of the race and I may have to jump in the driver's seat and race the main. Well, that works out. But whatever, sure. it'll be there. Sure. It's going to be there under his name. Well, it'll be good. I better get the hell out of here because the snow is just coming down. I know so, the roads are going to be yeah. nasty. Um, but thanks for letting us uh, see you after the race. And I'm, I'm glad to see the car all in one piece. And uh, your brother Joe builds a badass car. Yes. This UFO car. And uh, hope to see you out there more yeah, killing it with be this awesome. thing. I'm, I'm excited. Well, thank you. Yep. See ya. Yep.